tonight's presentation will be on the AeroV Turbo. It'll be an update on where the project stands. Our presenters tonight are John Monette and Drew Waterworth of Sonics Aircraft. Uh, for those of you that uh, haven't been to a Sonics workshop, uh, Drew Waterworth has probably the most time in the uh, AeroV Turbo powered uh, aircraft. He's a uh, freight dog during, I should say his day job is a freight dog, but he usually flies at night. He uh, is a test pilot of a number of different aircraft. He built a, a, a YX, uh, design, uh, one of the first YX, I think it was the first customer built YX in fact, and it was featured in Sport Aviation. He's a commercial pilot and an EA member. In fact, this is a picture out of that uh, Sport Aviation article from October of 2006. He has a really elaborate uh, flame colored paint job on that, that YX. And then uh, John Monette, uh, who is probably not new to anybody on this broadcast, but I'll go ahead and give you a little background anyway. He is uh, the founder of Sonics Aircraft, a uh, designer with a long list of aircraft to his credit. He's an A&P mechanic, and he has already been inducted into the Home Builders Hall of Fame. So with that, I want to wel welcome aboard both of our presenters, and I'm going to turn the screen over to John so that he can take the presentation from here. So welcome, guys. Hey, thank you, Charlie, for uh, having us, and uh, what do you say, Drew? Uh, sounds like it's going pretty good. I uh, might mention, uh, Charlie, that uh, not only is Drew a, a, a freight dog at, at, uh, at night, but uh, he just recently got married, as a matter of fact, on Saturday. So congratulations, Drew. And, uh, you know, it's taken him away from the hornet's nest, but that's the way it goes. Hey, thanks a lot. <laughs> yes, we should note that it is uh, Drew's honeymoon right now, and he is, he is here because the weather did not cooperate with his trip. So. And he's spending it with me. It's so really both good. is Arrowby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, let's, uh, Charlie will uh, talk a little bit about what an V is first before we get into uh, uh, some of the things that are going on at, in the hornet's nest. And uh, it's uh, one of the things that uh, we, we uh, have developed over the years. We've been flying uh, VW-based airplanes now since, since 1970 and uh, have a lot of experience with a lot of different conversions, et cetera. But when the Sonics came along, uh, we knew we were going to design it uh, for a VW type of engine, a, a VW-based engine. And uh, we looked at some of the improvements that we've thought about it for over the years and, uh, and produced this uh, engine. So uh, the Aero V2.1 now is what we consider a state of the art as far as uh, VW uh, based engines and I might add that the only thing that's really genuine VW on, on this uh, engine is the case. Uh, everything else is uh, aftermarket uh, and uh, particularly the crankshaft is our own and uh, proprietary uh, heads, uh, nicosyl cylinders, those kinds of things that have made this a very viable engine. Now, the base engine uh, is a 2180cc engine. It's one that we've, that, that base uh, uh, block is what we've been running for years and years. Uh, we set world records with that basic engine in uh, the Monix back in the 80s, and uh, it's proven to be a very stout uh, engine and uh, performs very well. The new things are the things that you see here in the picture that are red, and that's what really uh, brought this engine into uh, this uh, new century. So we produce the engine uh, as a kit, and uh, it's really uh, a way of getting uh, individuals to uh, build uh, an engine. You know, you certainly can build, if you're building an airplane, you can put an engine together. So. We provide all of the conversion parts, and probably the advantage is, one, that we're saving the labor of us putting the engine together. You, as a builder of an airplane, will have an engine that you can uh, easily uh, and comfortably uh, maintain. Uh, we can put it together uh, relatively fast. Uh, a weekend's time is, is not unusual, for sure. And uh, once you know that engine and go through all the manuals, etc. Uh, that we produce, and those are not only a DVD that uh, is a guide, a rough guide of how uh, the engine goes together, but more specifically our assembly manual goes part by part, uh, tool by tool, uh, liquid or sealant by sealant for every particular project uh, or part of the engine assembly process. 
And uh, also, uh, we use our AeroCarb or Aero Injector. We'll talk about that a little bit. But what makes this engine a little bit different than uh, most of the other VW conversions? Uh, one of the things is we think about putting it in a cowling. Uh, this engine has a very low profile from the front. Uh, we have uh, our carburation uh, at the at back end of the engine, so it lends itself to a very streamlined cowling in some of our racers and designs that was a very, very important feature. Uh, our crankshaft is now that we've had uh, such a volume of engines going through. It's a counterweighted crankshaft. It's stroked. Uh, that's how we take the standard uh, VW engine that was normally 1,600 cc's on up to uh, 2,180 cc's, a little over 2.1 uh, liters. And that uh, uh, gives us, with the stroke, it gives us the, the torque that we need to turn propellers efficiently. You'll notice on this on this uh, crankshaft, we have if the, the you VW buffs out there knows uh, would know that there's normally a distributor drive gear here. Well, we have no use for a distributor, so that's eliminated. Uh, we have our uh, our shrink fit prop hub uh, and our standard bearing assembly, so uh, we can easily maintain this engine in the future with stock parts. Uh, probably the thing that I'm most proud of uh, is our team. Uh, developing uh, this accessory case on the back of the engine. What, what it does is incorporate uh, all of the important uh, parts to run the engine. Not only the, the aero injector on the bottom here, but uh, looking at the back here, we see two magnetrons, one here and one here, which are true magnetos. And uh, some of you that have run lawn tractors and industrial engines for a long time recognize that as a standard uh, Briggs and Stratton part. It's a two-plug coil system that uh, is totally self-contained. It is energized by a magnet on a flywheel, and it will fire uh, two of the plugs. In this case, the top one fires the forward plugs, and the bottom one, 180 degrees apart, fires the aft plugs on the top of the engine. Then we have here two electric sensors for our electronic ignition, which run coils. Now these coils are dismounted here for the picture. They're normally mounted on a firewall, but uh, each one of these sensors also runs two cylinders, one running the forward cylinders and one running the aft cylinders. So we have a completely redundant system with four ignition systems. We've tested this uh, engine uh, in flight with the Sonics uh, many times at gross weight. We can run with just two cylinders running, and actually each one of these modules runs two cylinders. So uh, we would have to have uh, three systems or four systems fail uh, in order for the engine to stop having ignition. Uh, that's a, a really good thing, and, and probably the most exciting part about that is that there's no distributor involved, uh, and the only turning part on the whole system is the crankshaft assembly. And of course, you know, if you have a crankshaft failure, I, you have more problems than the ignition uh, alone. So that's an important part, plus our induction system, our starter, and this little red disc that mounts the uh, ignition system also comes off to, us to uh, service the uh, stator alternator, uh, and that's a 20 amp alternator. So this is, again, the heart of our, our system is our rear, rear accessory case, uh, uh, SkyTech starter. This is what a magnetron looks like, and you can see it's a very light unit, very easy to find as an aftermarket part for um, a replacement. The heart of this ignition system, of course, is our, our reduced uh, diameter flywheel. We use the SkyTech uh, high torque starter to run the engine. Uh, this is our magnet ring that runs the stator for the alternator, and of course the center of this is where the flywheel attaches to the, to the uh, crankshaft. We have a three-pole magnet here that runs the magnetron, so that's all there is to it. Uh, the electronic ignition is very simple. This also attaches to the inside of the alternator. It is adjustable for timing, whereas the magnetrons are fixed. So it's very easy to synchronize our ignition system with um, the uh, mechanical or the magneto system uh, in the magnetrons. So uh, when we normally uh, switch from the electronic ignition to the magnetron, we see no uh, mag drop at all. So 
Uh, it's a real simple system, and here's that simple timing mark uh, that we can bring around uh, and synchronize each one of these electronic modules. And by the way, we've developed all of uh, this electronics on, uh, in house. Our alternator is an encapsulated uh, stator. If you looked inside of this, it would look like a little radial motor uh, with windings in it, and uh, it's the only moving part are the magnets on the on the magnet flywheel that uh, generate uh, the alternating current that is then turned into DC. So the installation of the of the AeroV is pretty straightforward. Uh, it's of course a 12 volt system. Uh, we have uh, an induction system uh, that uh, is very straightforward. And by the way, all these red parts are billeted out of uh, just a solid aluminum block. Uh, we found over the years that castings have a lot of porosity, and uh, this has certainly improved the quality of the engine as, as it's put together. So with the engine being completed by the builder uh, in, and assembled, then the next thing is the uh, is the installation, which is firewall forward, and we pride ourselves at uh, at Sonics that have not only uh, a company that produces airplanes but produces engines and understands how engines have to go into airplanes, and uh, we bring that information forward. And one of those things is, of course, stuff like uh, uh, engine cooling baffles that have been thoroughly tested, and of course here in Oshkosh winter and summer months, uh, that's a, you know, a, a, a real test uh, for uh, engine longevity and, uh, and seeing that uh, we're happy behind the, these power plants. One of the things that we've really uh, improved upon or, or built on was uh, back in the, in the early 70s, I was the first one to fly, uh, first airplane to fly with what we call the lake injector carburetor, and that was a, one of the first throttle body carbs available for the snowmobile and motorcycle industry. And back then, <coughs> it was a, a simple uh, uh, guillotine type uh, throttle body that uh, simply opens, uh, it uh, pulls as the throat opens, it pulls um, fuel uh, through a system. Uh, the needle uh, adjusts the amount of fuel relative to the o air opening, so that's how we uh, we get the mixture in. It. The tuning is done by an infinitely adjustable needle. Uh, this little lever on the side is our mixture control, which is also a fuel shutoff. Now, the interesting thing about these uh, air injectors is that they have no float, so they work totally very well off of bag uh, of uh, off of gravity. And that gives us a positive fuel flow. Of course, you know, gravity's never failed us yet. So um, it simplifies the system. Because of the straight through carburetor uh, opening, or injector opening, we call it, uh, it is very resistant, if not in totally resistant to ice. So we don't have any carburetor heat to worry about. Another thing that simplifies it. Uh, at altitude, at fixed uh, throttle settings, we use our mixture control. Uh, to control the amount of flow of fuel to the carburetor throat, and uh, that gives us very efficient running uh, as we get up into altitude. So uh, all that thing, is, all that system works very, very well. There's a full amount of accessories that adapt the, not only the uh, aero injector to our aero V engine, but also to many of the popular uh, engines up to 160 horsepower, and they're available in different sizes. So there's a simple. Uh, set up from our, our normal throttle quadrant mixture control uh, through the firewall to our slide and our adjustable needle. So uh, over the years we've developed a lot of accessories for the, uh, for the engine and people have asked, well, how much does this thing weigh uh, installed? Uh, it's an 80 horsepower engine. Uh, with Nicosil cylinders like this, it weighs 152 pounds with everything on it uh, except the exhaust system. So. Um, it's, uh, that's a wet engine, and uh, it is a very acceptable weight for that uh, category. Uh, our exhaust systems are really designed for the Sonic specifically, but uh, are easily adapted to uh, many other designs. And of course, uh, the AeroV has been flying in, in, in many, many, many uh, uh, home-built airplane designs. Uh, oil separator is a device that allows our breathing air to uh, come in and be separated out so we don't 
bring oil out overboard, and then uh, we'll drain it back into the engine and recover it. It also works the same way upside down, so it's uh, real good for uh, when you're doing uh, uh, sportsman aerobatics to uh, not lose a lot of oil out of the engine from the breather system. Uh, we like to do aerobatics, so that's really a fun thing. And you know, it's always fun to put a smoke system on an airplane, no matter what. If you want to go out and terrorize a neighborhood, of course, it's a, it's a fun thing. So um, it, we have a, developed a very simple uh, smoke system that's uh, obviously very effective. So that brings us to the turbo. And and uh, Drew, I want to uh, jump in here at any moment, but um, w one of the many things that we're doing uh, in our Hornet's Nest uh, Development Center is uh, that it's, um, Drew, can you mute your mic a second? Thanks. I can get a little feedback. Uh, one of the things that uh, we're doing at, in the Hornet's Nest is uh, among the projects like our electric project, the jet project, the, our, our new 1X is um, always looking to continually improve uh, our our products and one of the things that we have uh, been working on for a number of years of the concept stage and and through the development of the Aero V system completely it was now time to to turn our 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 eyes on the possibility of getting more horsepower uh, inexpensively reliably and at altitude uh, so we have a lot of customers that are flying airplanes out of uh, high elevations high density altitudes etc. Well, we wanted to answer that with a little more than 80 horsepower and still keep our our engines within a, a reasonable price range. Of course, by having a kit engine, uh, we've we've kept that price down significantly. And you can check our website uh, at uh, sonicsaircraft.com, and you can look at uh, all uh, the price total price breakdowns of all all these things. But uh, with the turbo. Uh, the concept here is to do a complete bolt-on uh, adaptation to the, the standard Aero-V. So one of the cool things is that um, you can just pull the Aero injector um, and replace the manifold and uh, exhaust system uh, and uh, bring your engine up into a, a turbo configuration. We do a couple of things here that are, are different and we see that in this configuration, we have the turbo mounted very low. Now, mo most turbos are up high on an engine so they can drain uh, oil back into uh, the engine and, and uh, operate pretty well that way. But one of the things that would, in the Sonics, we're very restricted by a firewall, for one. And we want to get all the heat out of, away and out of the engine compartment as much as possible. So. Uh, the natural choice is to take this turbo and mount it low uh, near the uh, outlet of the, the cowling. Uh, this provides extra head for uh, our gravity system. And, uh, and then we use a mechanical scavenge pump to bring the oil back out of the turbo and, uh, and return it to the system in general. So uh, again, the heat restri restrictions, uh, make it uh, uh, really work that way. And, and uh, uh, we found that this system, even though it, it's required a little tuning, uh, uh, is very reliable. And one of the added things that we found in, uh, with the turbo is because of the pressure in the system, uh, we're running very even uh, cylinder head and EGT temperatures, which is really a bonus. Um, and uh, you know, we've looked at uh, other systems uh, that are out there with turbos. We, we see guys with electronic fuel injection um, and, and uh, uh, electric pumps, etc. Well, you know, my philosophy and our philosophy at, at Sonics is that uh, we, we like to take things off airplanes as much as possible. One of the things that always is, is failing is vapor locking is our fuel pumps, electric, mechanical, I don't care. Um, we uh, have a system that works off of gravity very effectively. Uh, we can uh, get more reliability out of our engines. And you know, the, the, the injector, the, uh, the uh, aero injector is, is, again, working off of gravity, so it doesn't, uh, it doesn't require a pump at all. Now, in some cases, 
uh, where uh, individuals need to have like, a, well, they have a wing tank or something like that, and they need to run a fuel system. It's very simple to run a recirculating uh, uh, pump uh, system uh, for that if it's necessary. But you'd already, you're already stuck with a fuel pump anyway if you've got a low-wing airplane with tanks and no wings. So uh, here's the basic configuration. You can see uh, we've got oil return, uh, oil scavenge pump, uh, which is a dual purpose pump. It's uh, one side of it is, uh, or the back side is the engine oil pump and the front is the scavenge pump. Uh, the turbo uh, has an automatic wastegate, which we are now uh, using a cockpit adjustable uh, waste actuator uh, uh, valve that uh, allows us to change the boost on the engine. Um, from the back, you can see it's pretty pretty straightforward, and a clean installation, and of course we have insulated pipes, uh, again, to drive the heat away from the engine. Uh, the turbos, standard uh, Garrett turbo, and uh, it's uh, we've uh, been tuning them with different sizes of uh, turbos, but uh, uh, this one has been working very, very efficiently. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about uh, the installation or the specific equipment uh, until we're through our flight test program. But we've been doing, uh, we, we've been, uh, I, I guess our, our focus is to, to, to reliably produce about 100 horsepower or above, a little bit above, uh, with this system. And uh, you know, we are and have achieved that. One of the things that we've, we're trying to do uh, and, and we're working very hard at is to have a system that uh, gives us added horsepower at takeoff with a fixed pitch propeller and able to n normalize it uh, at altitude. So uh, with a fixed pitch prop, you know, that's a little different than having a, a, a controllable prop. But uh, again, we're, we're trying to be very conservative on our approach to the system. Yeah, I will note, if you want really specific uh, numbers, uh, normally our, our Aero V's on a, on a Sonics uh, turn a prop about 54 inches in diameter with about 44 inches of pitch. Uh, we are now moving up to uh, props in the uh, 54 inch diameter wide bladed uh, 60 pitch. So. We're talking about 16 inches more of pitch on a propeller on, an, on this engine, and that's a significant uh, change. So trade-off is uh, weight, the added weight of the turbo uh, to our engine. When we still comply easily with our 200-pound or less firewall forward uh, installation. So uh, that that's a bonus when we when we can when we can boost the, the horsepower somewhere in the neighborhood of of 20% uh, or 25, 30%, uh, that makes a, a, a big difference. Uh, fuel burn, well, it'll be a little bit more, but um, we'll be going faster, so that's always a cool thing. No substitute for uh, more horsepower. Well, <laughs> here's the early system. Uh, there's two things here, of course. I'm holding the airplane down, but you know it, I, it, the thing is so powerful. Look at Drew. He's I don't know what happened, but anyways. Aerodynamics. Uh, yeah, aerodynamics. <laughs> okay, so um, and and Drew again. Uh, you can you can. This is kind of Drew's project, and we have a big uh, air scoop on the front of this uh, of the cowl here uh, for our static testing and this is when we did the initial uh, run up of the engine uh, with the first turbo so yeah, we were very happy at this point what do you think Drew? Yeah I mean the thing it runs really great I've done a lot of flying with it now and temperatures are all pretty much on par with a new Aero V engine and I mean it's running great making more power increasing everything Fuel burn I mean, increases everything. You got you to take it. You got to take one with the other. That's right. But you're getting the speed out of it, and you're getting the climb out of it too. So. Yeah, and, and I, I think uh, in this in these pictures, you can see how it's uh, nestled in, and and I might note that uh, with the different configurations of the airplanes that we have, we now have you know the the, the Sonics and uh, YX airplanes, uh, the. Um, uh, the Xenos aircraft, which are in the standard gear configuration, would all mount just like you see it here. Uh, with our tri-gear, 
there's a different induction system and uh, exhaust system. So that'll be that'll be under development soon. Uh, we're working on on that, but uh, we're really trying to make this a headache-free installation. And uh, after 30 years, we know that um, yeah, when we when turn over a new project like uh, the turbo. Uh, to our builders that, that we we are going to have to ha have significant uh, tech support for them to be successful and uh, for the system to really work. So again, we're taking a very conservative step-by-step -step approach uh, to our testing, our documentation, uh, everything that it makes this this or will make this turbo a success. So uh, that's that's an important thing to know. Um, Again, uh, the installation uh, is is relatively simple, and well, yeah, I think that snow cool, helped us cool quite a bit, don't you think, Drew? Uh, yeah, that was def definitely. Yeah, yeah, and that keeps pr Drew pretty uh, pretty cool in the cockpit too. Um, we've had uh, a number of uh, different propellers, so we've been stepping up, uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit. We were in, we're testing uh, some adjustable propellers that, that proved inadequate at the at the moment for uh, what we're doing, so uh, we have had uh, great uh, cooperation with uh, Sensenic propellers in uh, developing and uh, propellers that are suitable for uh, this installation. So again, that'll all be part of a you know, more or less a turnkey uh, operation when when this thing is fully developed. So the sort of YX looks like um, Drew going out for a test flight and. Uh, and uh, flying the airplane uh, just uh, happily, and uh, I'm really proud to see it. So, the it, the applications that we see are not only for our line of airplanes, uh, the the YX and the Xenos, etc., and uh, that uh, the new little One uh, X. Will certainly uh, that a, a turbo will appeal to those individuals? It's a real tight installation, um, but uh, we're working on it. So uh, we've got a lot of time yet to to put in on on testing this product before we uh, turn it loose to the public. And uh, you know, people will be asking, you know, how much it's going to cost, etc. But uh, it'll be as reasonable as as all the rest of our products, and uh, that's that's a, an important thing to keep in mind. So that's really uh, where we are in the back. Drew, can you add anything to uh, what what you think we're doing with testing and something that I might have forgotten? Uh, no, I'm, like like John said, it's um, this is something that you can't just you know you, we can't go out and fly for five hours and you know release it to everybody. It's got to be something that's you know very very feasible and easy for easy for people to put on, easy for people to adjust. You know we don't want to you know something that's going to you know, destroy itself after 10 hours or something like that. So we got to put some time in, and we got to, you know, we're taking it gradually and making sure that everything works the way it should, and you know, it'll be available when we can do it. And but I mean, so far right now, it looks very promising. I've got probably close to 15 to 20 hours with the turbo airplane, and it's it's been amazing. It doesn't doesn't hiccup. Everything, EGTs, CHTs are within 10 degrees side to side. And it just I mean, very very reliable. It's been a very very great engine so far. So testing is going good, and you know keep we'll keep working it out. We'll yeah, and I, and I might add that uh, you know the, the the testing here, you know Oshkosh is <laughs> most of you come to Oshkosh when it's it's warm. <laughs> Uh, as you've been watching weather, uh, we've had uh, just horrendous days. Today is, uh, has been uh, is almost zero zero all day long, and uh, that is that's been the story of the spring and everything. So we're not making excuses, but we just have limited time to to uh, to, to do testing uh, on this project. So uh, I I know that a lot of guys are are interested in it and are are, are you know sometimes a little impatient, but you know we don't. We we can't rush it. You can't rush uh, Mother Nature and and uh, the the testing process. We look we look for good weather uh, to do our testing so that we can get accurate data, and uh, our instruments uh, record all of that data and we can sift through it and and when we make subtle changes either to the system or the propellers or whatever, uh, we're compiling that data and, and uh, we we are learning from it. So. 
uh, it's it's a very uh, thorough test program as as we're running it when we can in between flying all all the time on the one X and and all the new projects so uh, and even the electric so that's uh, uh, a big thing. So Charlie, uh, do we have uh, have some questions at all or? Absolutely, they're coming in fast and furious right now. So let's go ahead and uh, step back a second to uh, one on the uh, oil cooler. Some uh, Tim noticed he says no oil cooler needed? Question mark. No, we have an oil cooler on it. In fact, I don't know if I can show you the picture here, but I'm sorry, I have to scroll through these things. But uh, we have. Uh, on the Aero-V, uh, in many installations, we don't have an oil cooler. We have a new product that uh, that reverses a standard uh, VW oil cooler. But you see, uh, in this picture, we have an oil cooler right on the bottom of the engine. So uh, we run that, and uh, it, yeah, that's an important thing because we do have a lot of uh, you, you do have a tremendous amount of heat generated uh, by the by the turbo itself because it's collecting all that exhaust. And uh, it uh, is running with an oil, oil line through it and an oil drain, and uh, it's necessary to keep our oil temperatures even. But uh, that system is very, very adequate, and uh, you know we've developed it for the Aero V in general. And in some installations, we have uh, oil coolers, uh, and uh, in really hot situations, and sometimes we run them without. So our factory airplanes have uh, uh, various configurations, and we test them all. We we're running eight airplanes, so we 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 think we know a little bit about it. All right, and Tim probably has a question that a lot of Sonics builders would love to know the answer to: Is will this increase the useful load for an Aero V powered Sonics? Um, that's it's what we uh, base our useful loads on is not not only the g loading of the airplane but the power loading of the airplane um, the power loading uh, is why the jabru has a little more useful load uh, and it's well within our design limits uh, but uh, we we will determine that in the future. So what what it does is it you know uh, <laughs> why everybody would like to push the safety margin as far as they can. And it's like, you know I don't know if that's a good idea. Um, so we we you know again we we try to be very conservative with our numbers and with the with the performance figures, and uh, you know we make it an all around airplane. And and uh, you know the Sonics has a very nice useful load if it's kept light. Um, and it's a very stout airplane, as everybody knows. Uh, so uh, you know, we like to keep it happy. What we're looking for here is is uh, more performance at altitude, um, and, and that means get, you know getting guys out out safer at higher altitudes. I mean that you're going to have more power, so you can just load up the airplane at higher altitude and get out. It's that's just not you know. I'm sorry, you can't have your cake and eat it too. It's just the way it is. All right, I got a question for that I think probably Drew's going to chime in on, and a lot of people want to know what kind of climb rates are you seeing in, when you're flying the turbo-powered vis-a-vis, you know, your experience with the, the standard Aero V-powered YX? Well, Drew, do you want to answer that, or you want me to? Uh, uh, let me just jump in. The, the rate of climbs, of course, relative to the propeller. So uh, as we're developing the propellers and we're going up to more pitch, um, yeah, we are we are in the range of uh, very uh, much in the range of what we use for a propeller on our Jabru six-cylinder engine. So we are looking at, at um, a, a climb climb rates that are in between or closer to the Jabru six-cylinder, and uh, at altitude there is a point where we can normalize our horsepower where we'll be passing up a Jabru six. Yeah, like like you said, you know the, the climb rate. And and the cruise speeds. I mean, we've gotten pretty pretty significant changes in both of them. Um, but like you, like you said, you know, a lot of our testing has been on different propellers, so we can't. I mean, you can I couldn't pin a number down per propeller, and you know, we've got three more on the wall that we're waiting to try. So it is a it's it's a significant increase. Yes. Okay, and uh, Pierre would like to know that uh, would like to know if you've put some sort of ballpark price together for for the turbo package, or do you at least have a goal? I guess I should ask. Yes. 
Do you want to share it? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not. We, you know, there are just too many variables right now with the market, and uh, uh, you know, the 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 whole goal is to have an engine that's under ten grand. So, uh, you know, that that fits within our our philosophy. Uh, we, you know, once we once we start, if, if the engine, if a, a turbo Aero V starts to compete in price, and I mean equal price with something like a Jabru 2200 or, which are very good engines, Jabru 2200 and Jabru 3300, um, it, it's missed the it's missed the target. Um, the idea here is to be uh, with the with the Aero V and the, and the way we do the system uh, with a build-it-yourself engine uh, to add a turbo to it is is uh, got to be somewhat economical. That being said, turbos are not cheap. So uh, and uh, you know we are using the, the finest quality uh, components in this in this unit to make it right. Okay. Uh Tony S. would like to know, is the turbo supported by just the exhaust system or does it attach to the engine mount as well? Uh, it has a support system uh, that, that takes the weight of the turbo. No, it's not just hanging out there by itself. Okay, and uh, Bob, uh, I think you covered this, but Bob had a question. Is the boost control automated or manual? The, the, it's got an automatic wastegate on it, but that is adjustable. Uh, and we're, we have a cockpit adjustable uh, it, wastegate. So what it does is it does bleed air on the wastegate. If a wastegate opens at seven pounds of boost or whatever, we can make it open uh, at much higher boost levels by bleeding off its its uh, the the vacuum that drives it or the the pressure that drives it. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's a, it's an internally wastegated turbocharger with a vacuum with a vacuum actuator that we we can adjust. Yes. Okay, and uh, what effect, if any, will you uh, do you expect to have on the TBO of the Aero V? Um, conservative, I don't see any uh, reason it has any effect because there isn't a TBO on the on the Aero V. The longevity engine, I guess, is what you're talking about. But um, it, with turbos running conservatively uh, and and properly tuned, uh, there's no reason that they shouldn't uh, it shouldn't last any as long as the Aero V. Hey, you know, this a question we always get is what about turbo Vs on uh, uh, TBOs on on experimental engines, and it just doesn't happen. Um, you know, when we look at the average uh, individual that flies uh, uh, a home-built airplane, uh, in, you know the statistics more than I, Charlie. But uh, you can guarantee that most most the average uh, pilots with an airplane fly less than 30 hours a year. That's one of the reasons we have our little reality check logo on our airplanes because uh, we know that uh, there are a limited number of weekends or limited number of days that you get out as a home builder to go out and fly your airplane, and uh, you know it 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 just comes down to you know the the engines usually rust out before they wear out, but there's normal maintenance and and uh, keeping the engines. Uh, uh, up to par uh, is is very very simple, and uh, using our manuals and and our advice, uh, you'll you'll uh, have an engine that lasts very 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 well. Okay, and uh, John, you'd mentioned that you're anticipating being able to put this onto the One X, correct? Yes. Okay, and uh, do you think that will affect the ability for it to be a sport plane and and be flown by sport pilots? It may be, but remember that uh, the sport pilot airplanes, this is like our Jabru six-cylinder powered uh, um, Sonics and YXs, et cetera, all qualify for sport pilot even though they have those big engines in them. Again, it, it go back to the rules, read the rules. It's about uh, maximum continuous horsepower at sea level. So a uh, non-boosted engine at sea level is, you know, just what it is. Okay. Um, you, you've talked about the smoke system. You've talked about the turbo. Is the turbo compatible with the smoke system? Yeah. I mean, there's no reason a, that a smoke system can't be uh, put on a turbo. It just goes right in that exhaust pipe that we're, we've got up on the screen right now. So inject it into the exhaust after the turbo. That'd be a pretty good smoke generator. We haven't done it yet, but you know, it's, I anticipate that that wouldn't be any big deal. 
Okay, and uh, you did talk about props, but Mark would like you to uh, uh, answer the question, how big of a propeller can the Aero-V Standard and Aero-V Turbo swing? Well, the, the, the bigger propeller is um, an ambiguous question. Does it mean more diameter or pitch? Um, normally, we're, we're turning on RPMs uh, on Aero Vs on up to 3,600 RPM or so, normally cruising at, at 3,000 to 3,400, depending on, on the aircraft itself. So, you know, normally those, that, that range uh, limits you to about 60 inches in diameter before tips go somewhat sonic. Um, it doesn't limit you to that diameter, but also in pitch. So, on the slower airplanes, you'll be using larger diameter, wider blade props that, uh, that uh, uh, allow the, uh, some efficiency out of the, out of the engine uh, at its normal operating range. And then um, for the faster, cleaner airplanes, of course, we're using um, a lot more pitch and littler diameter props uh, to make them work. So uh, we, props are, uh, are very much an, an important <laughs> goes without saying, an important part of getting a performance out of any engine, and uh, uh, particularly small displacement engines, and two, two liters is relatively small displacement, um, but that's, you know, what we do, and, when, and, and we stick to direct drive. Uh, I've never been a fan of redrives on, on, on VW-based engines. Uh, you know, it's been done, it's, it's been done successfully, but it's just a lot of machinery in my uh, in my estimation, and, and what we concentrate on more is the design of the airplane. The engine's going to go on so it can work efficiently. Okay, uh, Dave would like to know, is it your intent that it could be easily added to a Sonic that's already flying with a stock Aero V? That's exactly what we did. Okay, and maybe this one's to Drew. Is the exhaust quieter when you're using the turbo? Um, yeah, the, the exhaust is quieter because uh, you know all your exhaust system is going through that turbocharger, and it's it basically acts like a muffler. You know, it's a little bit quieter, a little bit smoother, and yeah, I mean, it all on the ground in the air, it's very, very smooth, very, very quiet power. Yeah, it has a very distinctive sound in the air, uh, which is uh, is really pretty nice. Uh, so you know, we we uh, and again, Charlie, I guess we don't we don't use uh, mufflers on our airplanes on our engines. Uh, with uh, some of our exhaust systems are are two to one. Uh, we we're very quiet. You know, we operate out of uh, Whitman Airport, and there's there's their standard airplanes around Cessna 172s and Cirruses and everything that make a whole bunch more noise than we do, except maybe when we're doing some low passes. Those are, then, I'm, then it's pretty cool. That's when you want to make noise anyway. Okay, what kind of modifications do you need to make to the uh, baffling system? Yeah, baffling system is pretty straightforward. It's uh, almost identical uh, uh, to our, our standard system. We haven't really changed anything, have we, Drew? Um, no, just a couple more lines for that oil return line in the front, and uh, yeah, yeah, a couple oil, of holes here and there. Yeah, the two oil cooler lines going through it, but yeah, other than that, it's it's all the same. Yeah. Again, I remember I said this is a kind of a bolt-up situation to a normal uh, uh, aero aero V installation. Okay, and uh, what kind of boost are you running the uh, the turbo at? Uh, we're running it at various boost levels, uh, and what we can consider um, uh, conservative boost levels. So we're not going to give you specific numbers until this thing is completely developed. Okay, and uh, Dennis would like to know if uh, is the chamber design a quench type? The chamber design is a stock VW chamber. Uh, uh, basically, the heads are, are our 401 heads that are our are, are stock racing heads, the heavy walled heads. Okay, and going back, uh, Tommy had asked a question earlier about the Aero V. Does it use a standard number four bearing or a machine bearing for more surface area like some other ma manufacturers? No, it uses a standard, uh, th that standard bearing. Uh, it's opened up for more oil flow. And uh, if you look at, oh, if I could go back to the crankshaft design, it's, it's quite a ways back here, but um, 
let me t talk about that a little bit. Uh, I think one of the biggest wives' tales is, uh, you know, that we need more radio load uh, bearings on these airplanes. We're running uh, very light propellers uh, most of the time. Let me go. There you go. Um, on the design, uh, this is a solid crankshaft here. Look, at, there's a bearing here and a bearing here. Um, for you to bend this section is is quite difficult. Uh, under load, considering uh, the radial loads that are on the propeller, very light, uh, so much much less than uh, a lot of the loads on, a, on an automobile that this, that this crankshaft experiences. So, uh, no, we use standard bearings so that if Aero V ever goes away or Sonics ever goes away, you'll be able to maintain your engine. Okay, uh, is there any more uh, instrumentation required for the turbo engine? Yeah, we have a, a basically uh, some simple simple uh, manifold pressure gauges. So, and what's really cool about that is most of the modern instruments now uh, will will um, like our uh, Stratomasters will uh, accommodate those senders. So you can do it electronically, or you can do a smart single or something like that for the boost. Yeah, you can even, I mean, you can go to AutoZone and for 15 bucks you can get your own boost gauge if you wanted to. I mean, it's, that's, that's all you really need to monitor. Okay, and a uh, couple of questions have come in over, over the course of the evening about uh, MoGas versus AvGas and whether you could run MoGas in the engine. Um, let me jump in here, Drew. Uh, Yes, you can run MoGas. Uh, in, in, if you can get um, non-ethanol-based uh, uh, 90, 91, 92 octane, you can set the engine up for, for that. Um, is it desirable? As long as there's 100 low lead available, no. Uh, I, I'm, I am really not an advocate of uh, auto gas. But uh, the engines, you know, uh, this is basically an, a, a an engine that is based on a car engine, and uh, they've been running years and years on low octane fuels. But you have to adjust the, the uh, compression ratio accordingly. And uh, you know, for a few extra dimes, <laughs> a few dollars, that uh, AV gas costs, we much prefer to run AV gas. Okay, um, and uh, John, there's a couple of questions. Can you just clarify uh, who produces the the uh, Aero V engine and where do you order it from? And I, I think some people sometimes get confused by the, the marker Aero V. Aero V is uh, a term that I used on all of our engines in the past. This engine is built entirely by in, in the auspices of uh, Sonics. So uh, you order it from Sonics aircraft. Um, and we when, and we also have questions occasionally about do we sell the conversion parts? Uh, do we sell those pretty red parts that you see in the picture here uh, to individuals so they can convert their own engines? No. Uh, I learned a long time ago uh, when we back in the uh, 70s and 80s when we had Aero V conversion systems, which was all the parts. Uh, to convert an engine, a VW engine, you could get, you know have one from a junkyard and put our parts on it. That would be the manifold system, the ignition system, etc. And we found that uh, over the years, you know, but it had an Aero VR marker on it. So when the engine, when the basic engine failed, um, you know, it was called an Aero V. Well, we like to be responsible uh, for our own products, and, and the Aero V moniker now means that it's a genuine Aero V engine, uh, just like Continental or Lycoming. Like so uh, that's that's the way the way we market it, and uh, it's marketed directly through Aerovi. So again, I would uh, hope you'd check out our website at sonicsaircraft.com. Yeah, let me just jump in as a as somebody that's put together one of the engines, and uh, you know it's it's very well supported. But I mean, everything comes brand new in a box, you know, and you just go from there with the installation guide and the video, and uh, you know you really. With the, with the exception of a few hoses you got to fabricate and things like that, everything is brand new, right from Sonics, uh, you know, uh, ready to go. That's correct. Okay, and uh, several people pushing on the idea of uh, uh, 
we realize that you can't give a prediction as to availability, but is 2012 at least a possibility? Absolutely. Um, believe me, we're working as hard as we can on this. We're, we're presently, uh, uh, you know, uh, the Sonics is, <laughs> as big as it may sound, is still a very small company. Uh, we ha and uh, uh, we have uh, a number of resources being spent uh, on, on a number of projects as, as time provides. And we, we kind of dovetail all the projects together. And, and right now, uh, we we are seriously involved in delivering one X kits uh, before the fly-in, and uh, you know we've got a huge waiting list on airplanes. Very successful, and we're we're, we're delighted with that. Uh, we have the electric aircraft that we're working on. That uh, as we speak, uh, Pete Buck is in town uh, from California for this week, uh, working on on our electric project. We have uh, again uh, more prototypes of the one X coming along. Uh, we have the jet project sitting way back in the back of the workshop because we just don't have time to go out and spend the time on it that it requires. Uh, so, you know, it, are we spread thin? Yeah, you bet. And are we working hard? You bet. And there, there's just so many hours in the day. Uh, and we are uh, progressing as quickly as possible. And, you know, you really want us to spend the right amount of time on, on the development of something particularly like the turbo because, uh, frankly, we don't want to be inundated with a, a lot of uh, technical uh, support, uh, which uh, is not only expensive for us, but it takes a lot of time. Uh, we'd rather we would rather have the product right, uh, so that we can limit that. Our hands are pretty full, but I, I mean, on every good day, some good days, I'll end up flying three different airplanes. So that's, yeah. we wait for good weather and pound it out when we can. You know, on bad weather days, we keep building. Yeah, Drew flies all night, and then he comes here and flies when he can, when the weather <laughs> permits, and uh, and pounds on airplanes otherwise. So uh, we're very proud of the effort that uh, that uh, Drew puts in, uh, you know, as a part-time uh, employee and for a long time uh, uh, volunteer here. So uh, this project really has gone forward because uh, as Drew is around. Okay, Drew, what kind of takeoff distances are you seeing compared to the uh, standard YX setup? Um, they're they're definitely shorter. I mean, we haven't, like I said, I haven't measured anything. I can't give specific numbers on, you know, how how much more climbs climb we're getting, how much. But it's it's definitely it's it's a shorter it's a shorter distance and it's a greater climb. And you know, it would basically be like having a twenty pound heavier, twenty horsepower more aero V engine. You know, it's 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 going to perform like that. So I mean, everything's everything's going to shorten up a little bit, but no, we haven't measured distances or. Yeah, the big the big advantage again to keep in mind is uh, uh, yes, takeoff and uh, performance is is better. That again, we're we're placing this engine kind of uh, uh, at sea level in between the Aero V and the and the uh, thirty three hundred, but at where it's really going to shine is at altitude uh, when you're when you're doing some. Uh, serious cruising with it uh, for the same amount of fuel burn or less than what you'd have at the comparable air to air altitude with a Jabiru six cylinder uh, you're going to uh, you know you're going to be going fast so it, it should uh, be really good I'd imagine what it would be like uh, if we had oxygen system and transponders in the Xenos uh, we, we'd be able to really cruise the thing at high altitude it'd be pretty cool and maybe we'll get to that hopefully someday we'll have enough time yeah, we can put a bottle in the back of there and run a cannula up, I'm sure. Yeah, there we go. That'll be for the next <laughs> webinar. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay, and just, John, just to clarify, Douglas has a question. Um, is the turbo setup going to be available to anyone or only builders of Sonic's projects? So I, I'm not entirely clear, but he may be implying, can you buy just the turbo setup, or are you going to have to buy it in conjunction with an already existing Aero V package? Um, it, it'll only be available for the Aero V, just like all of our parts. So that doesn't mean that it has to go on a Sonics. Uh, I mean, it can be on, on any number of airplanes. And again, I invite you to check our website out, and you can see how many different airplanes uh, the Aero V is on. Uh, we're very happy with the, the way it's been accepted, but not not only here, United States, but in Europe um, and uh, throughout the world. So that's that's a real important thing. But uh, it's part of our system. It's just like uh, you know, you wouldn't 
well, we just we're just not selling a, a, an, a turbo package to fit on anybody's VW conversion, except ours, which is the best anyway. Um, okay, and Daniel would like to know if there's any problems with the with starting with the turbo engine. Uh, I, Drew can speak to that too, but uh, the starting is just like anything normal. You know, that's one of the real advantages of the aero carb because uh, it, it, you know, you have an immediate fuel flow uh, to the carburetor. We don't require a choke. We start in cold weather as easily as we do in hot weather. So, uh, with with the adjustable mixture control and the way the system's set up, it's very simple. And I, I think when we first fired up, right, Drew, you can back me up on this. When we first fired up the turbo for the first time. Uh, we're, 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 we're anticipating with the intake induction system, uh, uh, well, this is going to take a while. Well, the, the, the engine went through about three blades before it fired, and uh, that, was, that was pretty impressive. Yeah, and it, I mean, it, it starts up just, you wouldn't know the difference. It, it's a little bit quieter when it does start up, but as far as time and effort, no, it it's, fires it up. Yeah, and that's simply uh, the startup procedure is we make our mags hot, uh, or our, we call them mags, because everybody says that's for an ignition system. We have our electronic ignition system. We have our magnetrons on. Uh, we have our fuel on. We push the mixture to rich and hit the start button, and we're running. Okay, and uh, Chuck I had a you're question. falling asleep back there, Charlie. No, no never mind. Okay. Uh, Chuck would like to know what the approximate dimension from the back, uh, the, the back of mounting to the firewall. He's not building a Sonics, and I know in some of the photos it appeared that it was quite, quite a ways. Uh, I don't have my ruler with me, but if you go to our website, all the dimensions are right there on our on our website on the ROV engine, uh, on the ROV engine page. So you'll be able to scale it from that easily. Okay, and uh, Peter would like to know if you've done any aerobatics in the turbo uh, with the turbo, or expect to. We expect to do aerobatics. We haven't. We haven't. Uh, we're not done with the prop development and all that. This should be no. Uh, there shouldn't be any problem doing aerobatics with it. This is such a straightforward system. So. Yeah, it should yeah. be. I mean, gravity, yeah. fat, everything, yeah. every oil system, yeah. fuel systems are all the same. So it's yeah, and the oil system for the turbo is 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 being scavenged all the time. So it's not an not yeah, an issue it's, of it's pressure on the top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Pierre Pierre had a, a general question about radio noise with your ignition systems. No, uh, we just don't have it. Um, the systems uh, we use resistor plugs and. Uh, we don't have, you know, you can see from the pictures, we don't have shielding on anything, and uh, all the modern radios are very, very uh, tolerant of it. When we fly uh, with micro air radios, with portable radios, with the new Stratomaster radio, which is awesome. Um, so uh, all of those systems work really, really well. Uh, that's just, uh, it's just very straightforward. And, and, you know, you can get online with any of the guys with the, uh, Aero V engines that are in our talk lists, etc. That that uh, uh, Sonics talk uh, is is right there, so you can you can get on and check that out. Okay, and uh, Rick would like to know: with a new motor, do you ex uh, recommend installing the turbo right away, or are you anticipating uh, running it without the turbo first to break the engine in, and then adding the turbo later? We're running on new motors right now. Yeah. Well, every engine that we run with the turbo is a brand new motor, um, so uh, it, there it isn't any real big deal. And you know, it's like all things. Um, you know, uh, when we break our engines, in, it's really simple. We just run the hell out of them, um, and that's the best way to seat the, the rings and get everything set. So uh, we don't baby our engines. On uh, uh, we we do avoid a lot of ground running. Uh, which is the worst thing you can do, uh, fiddling around with the engine uh, when it's uh, overheating. We do static run-ups, um, and we watch cylinder head temps on that when we're doing our carb adjustment, which is relatively a short period of time uh, to get our carbs set up, and then uh, and then we go fly. Okay, and about how many uh, Aero-V engines have been del delivered to customers, the stock Aero-Vs? Um, that's a good several hundreds. Uh, and I and I don't have a specific number, and I and I really should, but you know what? I'm working in the R&D department. I'm not in sales. 
as many people have easily reported to me all the time. <laughs> so. He is very good at sales, though. Yeah. So if you guys have questions, you know. <laughs> and technical support. Make sure you ask for John. Yeah. yeah. He's very supportive, very, you know, <laughs> reassuring kind of guy. Okay, all right. Okay, and Keith would like to know, is the engine always under boost? Um, it, no. It's not under boost until you, 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 until you come up on the throttle um, and put it under significant load is when, it, when, the, when the turbo really kicks in. And it's just like you're driving a turbo car, you know, and it, if you're at low cruise speeds, you're not under boost. It depends exactly as John, John said. It depends on where your power settings at. You know, higher power settings, yeah, you're gonna be you're gonna be under boost. You know, lower power settings, yeah. you're just running normal like a normally aspirated engine. Right. So we bring up the RPM. That's the turbo is turning at a higher RPM. Therefore, you're getting boost at lower RPM. It's not very efficient. So that's how it works. Okay, and Dick would like you to explain a bit more about the two-stage oil pump. How is it different from the standard oil pump? It's, um, all I'll say is it's uh, two pumps. Uh, it's uh, it's a, a piggyback pump that um, is one, uh, has the, all the passages uh, that run in the normal oil, oil galleys from the crankcase to the engine uh, to produce the engine oil pressure. And then the other part, uh, the, the, the front part of the pump, uh, which is running on the same shaft, um, scavenges the oil out of the, out of the uh, turbo and uh, it is, uh, has a restricted flow so that we can maintain our pressures. And that's, that's one of the real balancing acts that we've been working on, which is pretty cool. Uh, we we uh, bring the, the oil back into the engine um, is so that we do maintain the, the engine oil pressure all the time. You know, that's one of the things. If a tor turbo fails, it's no big, I mean, it's it's a big deal, but it's you know the engine keeps on running just normally. Okay, and uh, Peter uh, just wanted to comment that your uh, reservation program on the One X worked very well. Will you mimic that with the turbo? I don't know. We haven't gotten that far yet. Um, the, Frankly, um, you know, I, I I just see that 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 will be something that'll be off the shelf, kind of like the engines. We do, you know, we do have uh, 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 we we can't deliver our our engines generally right off the shelf anyway because there's a you know the tremendous amount of of, of precision work that has to be done on them, and uh, you know that we we just have that in the normal flow. And I would expect that, that uh, once the turbo is developed, and, and again, uh, keep in mind that we have, we have some, uh, as you see this piping, this standard here on, and then on the slide that's up, uh, that will change somewhat for a tri-gear version because we have a nose strut coming through it. So uh, in some cases, uh, that configuration may be good on other airplanes uh, versus the one that we have that's designed specifically to fit the, the firewall of the standard gear Sonics. Um, but uh, that that you know, there's the, all of that still is is ahead of us, and it's not a real complicated deal. But it does take some some engineering time and uh, some development time, and uh, you know, we we don't expect that the delivery is that is the the big issue. It's just the development time. Okay, and uh, do you have to change the engine compression compression ratio at all no. for the turbo? No. Only for fuel. Uh, and you can run lower, lower. You know, if you're using auto gas, as I said, we we usually run. We recommend running our engines at seven to one. Some guys have been, you know, been running them at eight to one with auto fuel and have very good success. Um, it's kind of interesting to see some of the auto fuel conversions. So we used to have uh, in our system uh, uh, some gas caps and all that stuff, and people are using. Uh, uh, out of fuel, you know, they see some deterioration in the rubber and everything. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not real happy with the inconsistency of auto fuel throughout the country. So, again, uh, uh, with the aviation gas running at a normal compression ratios with or without the turbo, is totally acceptable. Okay, and uh, Tom uh, was interested in the 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 wrap of the exhaust pipes. Uh, what what is it, and do you recommend it for the standard AeroV? 
Uh, not necessarily for the AeroV. What we're trying to do is with the wrap is keep all the heat in the pipes, which is uh, it helps the turbo and uh, keeps the heat out of uh, of the main part of the cowling when you're trying to cool the actual engine. So, uh, <coughs> excuse me, it's, that is a standard uh, fiberglass wrap that uh, is available through uh, most of the uh, auto uh, or performance shops. Uh, and uh, it's it's pretty easy to put on, and uh, it's smelly. I will say it's not inexpensive, though. It's not inexpensive. Mm -hmm. That's why we don't use it on our standard AeroBees now. <laughs> I will say we used a very small amount just where there was, uh, I think it was right where the control cables were getting mm -hmm. fairly close to the exhaust. We wrapped it right there just to keep In the, the Trigear version, yeah. That mm -hmm. was the Trigear, yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. It is very effective. Like after shutdown, you can grab one of those pipes and you won't burn your hands. Yeah, that's nice. We have we have many scars here and there, and uh, you know some of them are burns. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, Noel uh, would like to know if I plan on retrofitting an Aero V. You talk about it being a bolt-on item and that no compression ratio uh, change is required. Other than the oil cooler and a new oil pump, is there anything else that has to be changed or any part of the engine that has to be opened up? No, um, no the basic, not really. The basic engine doesn't need to be changed at all. I mean, the heads don't need to come off. Uh -uh. No, the exhaust intake, you know, and some minor... Yeah, minor if, you have a, if you have a standard oil cooler installation. Now, the one that's in a picture here is a little forward because we're, we're mounted on a stand, but that cooler normally sits aft in the Sonics, and uh, it's a standard configuration. There's just some repiping of hoses and stuff. The pump, you just the standard pump just comes out and the new one goes in. So that's not a big deal. And uh, there's some mods to the, to the rocker box cover, and it's just very simple stuff. Okay, and what kind of oil are you running in the uh, Aero V? We run, uh, we, uh, we like uh, Valvoline uh, 2050 racing oil. Uh, it's really a high quality oil. Uh, it's, it's gotten expensive lately, but not as much as aviation oil. And uh, this is an auto engine, so we use auto style oil. And uh, we use a little heavier viscosities because we just uh, keep our oil pressures up a little higher than stock in a car. And uh, that, that's fine, and that's worked out you know, over the years. And I'm talking about 30 years of flying these things. Oh, more than that. Oh, yay. Okay. <laughs> Enough about time. Okay, and uh, Mike would like to know if the, uh, the, the carb, the new carb you talked about is available to anyone, or is it yes. only available with the engine kit? And uh, you might want to clarify, you were referring to an aero carb and an aero injector. Yes, the aero carb is the original uh, iteration, which was very, very successful. Not any big changes. Uh, we just changed the manufacturing into uh, the aero injector. Uh, we, we took it's nine ounces lighter, uh, and uh, it's a pull type carburetor, meaning that the throttle quadrant pulls the slide open. Uh, in some of the push configurations, like the aero, the aero carb, it's uh, the original version. Um, there, guys used veneer throttles and uh, and push pull cable uh, push pull systems where in push uh, a, a push cable uh, will expand in the housing and, and, and it, it is very poor at pushing. It's much better at pulling. And with a with a slide type carburetor, a guillotine carburetor, there's a lot of vacuum on the slide itself. So it needs a positive actuation, and the best way to do that is to pull it. Actually, our, our carburetors are pulled open with a cable, and they will, they'll, they'll close by themselves. So uh, the system is really, really simple and very flexible. So in conjunction with our, uh, our throttle quadrants and, and all of that that we've that we shown, I, I guess we have showed that in the accessory section. That's, I'll try to get back to that. But any other questions? There's a throttle quadrant and a, and a pull system. And by pulling it, meaning that this is pulling directly in a push situation uh, where the throttle uh, cable was mounted somewhere else, uh, 
that's a different thing. That's what I mean, one of the features about the AeroCarb and the Aero, the Aero injector, and we did this just for to differentiate between the two models. The Aero, Aero uh, injector uh, has provisions that obviously for mounting the mixture control and the throttle cable, but most carburetors don't. If anybody's tried to ever, you know, hook up a Bing carburetor, they know what I'm talking about. Okay, and uh, John would like to know, will this, uh, are you expecting comparable performance to the 3300 3, Jabiru at 7,000 feet density altitude? Yeah, I would expect that it, we, we'd, be, we'd be pushing that, yes. Okay, and uh, let's see, we covered that one. Covered that one. There's a lot, a lot of different questions still, still on the board. We talked about compression ratios. Uh, I think you touched on this, but so just to confirm, Tommy had a question about it. So if the turbo fails, the engine would continue to run conventionally, or or would it yes. die? Yes. Yes. No. The carb is uh, it's the tuning works pretty well. In fact, um, you know. It, it, Understand that in in uh, in developing things, we have failures. Uh, we've had some some real setbacks in developing a system um, that that were not part of the turbo necessarily, but uh, it causes some some or the engine itself. Uh, we had uh, you know props that were insufficient and uh, that kind of thing but um, we, we have we have uh, in our early uh, I guess exuberance um, we've, we've destroyed turbos the engine kept on running we didn't even know why it wasn't wasn't it just wasn't boosting but it runs fine so a lot of those parts go out the exhaust pipe <laughs> all right and uh... Let's see, several questions uh, about the subsonics. Is there anything to report on that front, John? Well, it's sitting there. We, we, uh, we had uh, a lot of, of, of issues trying to get a, a, what is called a letter of authorization from the FAA to fly the airplane so they could fly it. Um, it is a, a, my pet project. Um, I've always wanted to do a jet, and it's, it's a, a really cool airplane. But as I said, there's, we're, we're just so inundated with, with uh, work like the, the turbo that we feel that that's a, that's a much more important endeavor for our company. And uh, so the, the, tur the subsonics is sitting there uh, and waiting to be flown. And we'll, we'll have news on that relatively soon, I think. OK. And uh, is there any sort of difference in shutdown procedure? Uh, uh, Drew can talk to that, but I, you know, there, we we do like to cool the engine down a little slower than I normally do. Yeah, usually on, um, like on the descent to come back into the airport or something, I'll I'll step the power down a couple inches of manifold pressure at a time, and we'll let it cool for a couple minutes. You don't you don't necessarily want to yank, you know, start yanking the throttle back and forth. I mean, it, yes, it will do it, but it's not good on the components. No, so usually you know make nice smooth power adjustments and. Usually, you know, the time it takes you taxiing back to your hangar is pretty sufficient cool down time, and you know, the turbo is way spooled down by then and shut down like normal. Okay, and uh, Marcos would, would like to know uh, the use of the carb before the turbo will not damage the turbo. No, no. The, the turbo has got um, it's got carbon seals. So it's a, what we, we're running it as a pull-through system instead of a push-through system, and that's that's really a, a, a system that allows us to use gravity feed. Uh, we don't have to stabilize pressures. We don't have to use fuel pumps. You know, when guys uh, when when we start uh, doing a blow-through system, which is putting the carb after the turbo, uh, then you have uh, a, a more issues with fuel pressure and uh, and changes and all that. So again, it's a it's making this thing as uh, dirt simple as we can, and and uh, again getting conservative boosts. We're not looking to make 500 horsepower out of this. You know, if we we're going to do that, we'd we'd uh, we we'd just use the standard uh, Aero V and and, and run it at uh, 7,000 RPM and 12 to 1 compression ratio on alcohol or something, and 
but we're not doing that. So. Okay, and just, uh, uh, Vic has a question just to confirm the material and the, is the exhaust material stainless steel? Yes, stainless steel. Okay, and uh, Noel would like to know, on either the standard AeroV or the turbo, what would you say is the highest wear item or the shortest useful life? On average here, I know the AeroV will, quote, last for many years of happy use, end quote. <laughs> Well, here's the, here's the thing. The, the uh, you know we have mechanical lifters, so uh, one of the things is that standard uh, kind of procedure at oil change time. Uh, once the engine's broken in, and you know a little more often uh, as it's breaking in, uh, the and it doesn't take long for a, a, an an aero V to break in. Uh, it just doesn't. So. Uh, we we adjust the valves, so that's the one th one thing that you want to make sure that you have clearance in the valves. Uh, and you know that's pretty easy to tell when the engine's cold. Um, it, you can pull it through, and and you can feel when a, a valve is. And you can actually hear it when it's getting weak, or when it needs to be uh, it needs some clearance on the on the valve adjustment. So uh, that's that's one of the things that um, uh, will will probably not wear, but uh, will require most of the attention. Everything else is pretty straightforward. The ignition system doesn't have any moving parts, uh, so uh, they're 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 pretty bulletproof. Um, and uh, I don't know. Can you think of anything, Drew, other than the normal oil changes and, and valve adjustment? That's that's most of what we do. Yeah, I mean, there's. You, you you pretty much summed it up. I mean, there's not a lot of parts that wear out. It's pretty straightforward. As long as you as long as you keep up on you know some of the preventative stuff, like like you said, the valves and oil changes and stuff like that. You know, and, and I guess I, I should interject that the, the other the other cool thing about using all the standard low end parts is that that a that a overhaul costs next to nothing compared to an aircraft uh, deal. I mean. Four pistons, rings, piston pins, and four cylinders you know, are well less than five hundred dollars. So um, that if that if there are wear items, uh, valves are very inexpensive, and uh, uh, you know those those kinds of things are are very very straightforward on the engine. So uh, even if they are wear items, they're not they're not expensive to to fix. Okay, and uh, Dick wants to confirm that you are anticipating offering the turbo for the tri-geared 1X as well, correct? We haven't, uh, yeah, I, I, I shouldn't say yes or no to that because really we, we haven't had time to look at the installation and, and uh, confirm that. Uh, Dick, there's just so many hours in the day. And speaking of that, John, we still have a whole host of questions on the board, but we've kind of run up against our uh, our allotted time here. We uh, had over 250 people on tonight's uh, uh, for the presentation, and I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, John, I want to thank you for taking time out of your day. Any uh, closing thoughts, you or Drew? Um, Drew, I got I got nothing for you. No, no uh, he's got a, he's a newlywed. What what can I say? So, uh, but it, you know, the the biggest thing is just to keep tuned. Uh, we we have normal uh, updates. Uh, Mark Shable does a great job with our with our website, and uh, we we uh, uh, update uh, as often as we can with all of our projects. And just uh, tune into the uh, the Hornet's Nest uh, uh, page uh, that that uh, has all of our our. Uh, research projects that are going on and uh, we update those on a regular basis so don't call us we'll call you and uh, you know check the website okay so I'll play a little damage control here for your son Jeremy uh, feel free to call Sonics uh, if you have any questions <laughs> And uh, they, they do have a great website with uh, a lot of good information. The forum boards are quite active as well. Um, can you tell us, uh, every one of your products will be here at convention, of course, because this is your home, correct? Yeah, they'll be, they'll, uh, yes, um, we're right across the uh, field from the, sh the show, fortunately, and by design uh, since 1980 and, and one, and uh, that's an important thing for us to be here at Oshkosh. I wish it were warmer most of the time. 
but um, yes, uh, we're here, and uh, uh, all the viable products will be on display, as well as uh, many of the research projects that we're working on, uh, just to show people where we're headed. And we're always looking for, you know, we're we're always looking for yes. As always, I'm always looking for advice as to what I should do. Excellent. He takes it very well. He's one, John, John takes advice better than anybody I know. So if you have something, let him know. Okay. Well, thanks, guys, tonight. Appreciate it, Drew, taking time out of your uh, honeymoon to, to help out with the presentation. And thanks, hey, thank everybody, you, for, thanks everybody yeah. for tuning in. And thanks, Charlie, for uh, giving us the opportunity. Thanks, guys. Good night, everybody.